from business meetings to carpool, after school activities, and so much more, successfully managing things around the house and also at the office can be a bit tricky at times, to say the least. Yeah. So today we have a panel of entrepreneurs, aka mompreneurs, joining us to share their secrets to success. This is so exciting. We have calligraphy expert and graphic designer, Dion Christensen. We also have laser cutting expert and creative director, Kim Cook. And we have children's wear designer, Sarah Lucas. Ladies, welcome. So Dion, I want to start with you first. Let's talk about your company, how you got started. You have two young kids. Yes, um, my business is called Nib and Pixel, and I do graphic design for wedding invitations. I teach calligraphy classes and do um, house portraits. That started when, in 2013, I used to be a wedding planner, which meant that I was never home on Saturdays. Yeah, it was like mm. every weekend, you're gone. Yeah, and so I wanted to do something where I could do it, be at home with the kids, and my background is in graphic design, and so it was just a natural, something to flow into. I did it for friends a lot as a hobby, and they loved it, so I was like, I'm gonna make money. Don't and your me. stuff is incredible. We're seeing some photos right now of the type of work you do, and I think it is absolutely gorgeous what you do. Viewers probably recognize you because you've been on Houston Life before, and we should mention that coming up in the next segment, uh, you're gonna give us a little demo of some cool yeah, stuff to do at definitely. home. Okay, Kim, let's move on to you. Let's uh, Tell us about your business. This is laser cutting, right? Yes, so um, my business is called Post Studio Projects, and we do laser cut designs that are our own but also custom laser cutting for different clients. Um, we do a lot of work for the event industry. I've worked with Dion on a lot of invitations and those types of things. And we got our start about three years ago and have kind of just added and grown organically. And so I understand that you kind of found your space and everything here in Houston while you were living in San Francisco? Yeah, I was in art school there and working for the art school and decided I wanted to do something creative and take those skills into a business scene and kind of stumbled upon laser cutters and what they can do is magic, really. I want to get one. Okay, yes. Sarah, let's move on to you. Describe your business because this is children's wear, but your story is really cool because this came out of a personal need you had because you couldn't find children's wear you liked. Yes, so two years ago when I had my daughter, I could not find anything that wasn't crazy pink or zebra or bright colors. I liked more neutrals, so. I just said, I can make this, and my mother taught me the basics of sewing, and I took it from there, and everyone liked it so much that I just decided to start a business, and I originally started with an Etsy, uh, like most creatives, and went from there, and now I have my own website, yeah. This oh, is so wow. cool because so well, what I love is that so many women out there are, are probably feeling the same way. I think a lot of moms are not alone. They have these mm -hmm. same feelings of, oh, I'm going to have a family and my career is over. Sarah, in your case, having children was the birth of a brand new <laughs> career. Yeah, they're truly an inspiration for what I do every day. So why don't we get into some of the nitty gritty of how you've all figured out ways to balance? Because for single folks like myself, I can it's barely hard. do How do you do your laundry and keep the house clean and all <laughs> well, so that? Dion, I think it's so cool that you took like a hobby, which I think is a great way, because I mean, you've got to be passionate about that hobby Definitely. and turn it into a business. Definitely. Um, well, I mean, what's that like going from that, that step, that kind of the, the tipping point that says, okay, this is no longer a hobby, this I can actually do as a business? When there's enough people that want and like your stuff and are willing to pay for it, go for it. Um, with me, I had just a few people in the beginning ask, and then friends of friends saw it, and more and more people asked, like calligraphy. I didn't know I was gonna be teaching calligraphy classes. One day a friend asked me to teach one in her studio, and it sold out, and more and more people asked, and I researched, and there were no calligraphy classes in 2013 that were going on on a monthly basis for the public. So I found that niche, grabbed it, Every month since then, except for three, when I was on maternity leave, I've taught calligraphy classes. Ladies, let's wow. talk a little bit about involving your kids in your businesses. Because I think for a lot of people, they think, okay, I can only focus on my professional career or being creative when I'm alone. But for many of you, that's not the case. You've actually figured out a way to include the little ones. How do you effectively do that? Well, I know it's something that's easier for me because I have an artistic um, paint is a lot of what I do. And kids love painting and they love helping. So my calligraphy kits, each month they're different. They have a different wrap on the outside. And my son Dylan paints them every month. And the students love it because it's something new that it's never, no one's ever gonna have the same one. And they turn out amazing. He's a really awesome artist. And I think that while I'm painting, like when I'm painting landscapes or buildings, I just put some paint down for him and he paints my calligraphy kits. Do you pay him to do this? Yes. <laughs> I think it's, I think it's 
important. This is a serious question. You really it's, do. It's important because I think that it's teaching kids in the beginning what hard work can achieve. It's 25 cents and... An hour? It's still no, allowance. No, no, a kit. It's a kit. <laughs> 25 cents a kit, but he's four. He's getting four. ripped off. Come on, he's over hey. there. He's four. <laughs> when he's older, he'll make more. So, so, Kim, how do you find that time? I mean, are you using nap time? Or how do you figure out... The, I mean, not only doing the beautiful work that you do, but you also have to do the billing and, and you know, all the other paperwork stuff, too. The boundaries. Yeah. So it's, it's difficult. Sometimes I find myself working after midnight trying to get things done. I've had to kind of set limits for myself and my clients in a way. My daughter's five and a half months old, so I'm like very much in the thick of navigating nap times and trying to get some semblance of a schedule. Not getting a full <laughs> night's sleep at all. Yeah, so I just, I work when I can and I have a, val a very like talented team of people at the studio that are helping me get the projects out and then admin work. A lot of times what I'll do, if I'm working outside of regular business hours, I schedule emails and use technology and to send things as if it were the morning or... So you truly set your own boundaries and stick to them? I really try to. Um, I also have to like navigate my own expectations of what I can do in a day for myself too. So I'm renegotiating that, just learning that I can't get everything I, done that I used to be able to. You can be super mom in another way. Yeah. Sarah, have you had a similar experience as Kim? I mean, cause it seems like when you're running your own business, it's sort of like when you're a college student and the studying never ends. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you could work all night if, if you let yourself. So how critical for you, Sarah, has it been to set those boundaries and those time limits? Yeah, you know, it's a lot when you're a business owner cause you are doing it all. Um, but for me, I just, I'll, I look at it and dissect my week and basically I try to block time uh, and say, you know, this is time for my business. These three days this week, I need to get these orders processed and get them out the door. Uh, and then these days are my time that I get to do something fun with my kids or, you know, you have to plan around birthday parties and, and nap times and all kinds of things. So just looking at your week at a glance, nothing too structured because as an entrepreneur, you can't structure everything 100%. But but you're and scheduling family time and social time the yes. same rigid way you would schedule your work time. Exactly, yeah. Because if you don't, then you lose all of it. And that's the whole joy of working for yourself, right? Yeah. Do you guys use color-coded calendars? <laughs> no. 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 Should. <laughs> Should. That's a good idea. You all sound really organized. Sorry, this sounds like you guys Jennifer are like... Jennifer <laughs> Broom uses color-coordinated everything. <laughs> It is, it is really, it's, okay, let's talk about social media. I mean, because there's something called like Instagram yeah. envy, where you yes. see these moms who are like, this morning I ran a marathon and tonight, <laughs> I, I mean, and so like how much of that is actually real and how do you avoid feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm just not living up to these expectations. Well, from my experience, I just look at my own life. Like I'm taking a picture of an invitation suite or something. I take up to 20 minutes styling the perfect picture. If I was to zoom out and take an image of the whole thing, around that perfect square, you'll see spilt coffee, you'll see crayons okay, everywhere. Okay, you have to do one of those though, because that's okay. real life, yeah. But I, so I know if I'm going through that, there's definitely other mothers that are going through the same thing. It's not perfect. Yeah. So you just got to think beyond that little square. Just zoom out and you know that there's a lot more craziness going on outside those borders. So we shouldn't judge ourselves based on what we see on social media. Because, I mean, I think a general rule of thumb is people like to post the highlights of their lives yeah. on social media. Totally. Look Was there this. any advice that somebody gave you when you were just in the infancy of your businesses? Advice. <laughs> I didn't know too many business mums before I went in because I was one of the first of my friends to have kids. So I was kind of like fumbling through it, not really knowing, but I don't know, what about you guys? Well, I was picking your brain oh, yeah. at one point <laughs> when I was newly pregnant and I was just like, how do you do this? And she actually gave me a few tidbits, like a lot of scheduling around things, finding out, um, what your kids' happy times are and trying to like navigate what you can do during those times and things like that. I think just knowing you're not alone is pro probably yeah. makes a world of difference. Sarah, very quickly before we go to break, I understand you have a great uh, offer for Houston Life viewers. Oh yeah, so um, on my website, saunababyandchild.com, you can use code Houston Life for 10% off your first purchase. And real quick, we gotta say that Sana, uh, your children's names, right? Yes, so Sana is a collaboration of my two kids, Samuel and Hannah. 
Hi. <laughs> um, and that's how I came up with it, yeah. Hey, great. Well, for more information on any of these local businesses we've mentioned, we have their websites listed on the screen right there. All and three of them. As we mentioned, Dion and Kim are going to stick around to give us a lesson in watercolor flower wreath making. Oh, my gosh. Sounds so cool. We'll be right back. <laughs> watercolor flower wreath.